There are seven college quarterbacks I cannot wait to watch in 2019. The 2019 season is going to be so fun because these seven guys I cannot wait to track. Uh, there are three quarterbacks that are not on this list. Trevor Lawrence is not on the list. Tua Tungvaloa is on the list. Justin Herbert, the quarterback from Oregon, is not on the list. Um, because, look, they're, they're really good, and we know they're going to be good. There's less intrigue there. Um, another quarterback that's not on the list is Kelly Bryant, the quarterback from Mizzou. I don't care. I don't think, he, I think he's very much overrated. I don't think, like, these are quarterbacks I think could be really good or could be very interesting. I think Kelly Bryant is neither good nor interesting. I don't think Missouri is going to be that great next year. Um, I could, I could be wildly wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll own it. I don't care. But right now where I sit in my chair, I just, I don't have an emotional draw to Kelly Bryant, the quarterback at Missouri. And I don't think they're going to be that great. The number one quarterback I cannot wait to watch next year in 2019 is Justin Fields, the quarterback at Ohio State. Um, he's a transfer from Georgia. He is immediately eligible. He will likely be Ohio State's starting quarterback. He wasn't the starting quarterback at Georgia. And uh, I, I understand. Um, here's my, my opinion on that. Jake Frum is the quarterback at Georgia. And um, I believe it's possible that Justin Fields is actually a better quarterback than Jake Frum. But Jake Frum is never going to get benched at Georgia. Here's why. He plays well. He's doing a good job. And when Georgia, they've won a lot in the last two years. In 2018, they went 11-3. and In 2017, Georgia went 13-2. and You can't bench a quarterback who's playing well when your team is winning. The minute Georgia struggles, they might re-examine Jake Frum. But he's, he's playing well. He's not having a bad career at all. And there's no reason to bench him. So why would you? Why would you let Jake DeBeeson come back? Why would you let Justin Fields come back? Um, I think Justin Fields is a really, really high-level quarterback who has a better arm and is far more interesting running the ball than Jake Frum. I cannot wait to watch him. Again, huge arm, runs the ball. I think he could potentially be a better quarterback than Dwayne Haskins was at Ohio State. I cannot wait to watch Justin Fields, new quarterback at Ohio State. The second quarterback I cannot wait to watch um, is Jacob Eason, the quarterback, another Georgia transfer. Jacob Eason is at University of Washington. Jacob Eason transferred two years ago. He had to sit a year out, um, and I, I cannot wait to watch him. He has a fantastic arm, and he's a guy who he got hurt at Georgia. Jake Frum came in, and Jake Frum played well, and Jacob Eason never got a chance again. Um, on April 27th, I'm going to watch Jacob Eason at the University of Washington in his spring game. And I cannot wait to watch. Look, if you watch Jacob Eason throw the football, he's just different. He's very, uh, got a unique amount of arm strength that you just don't see from everybody. I believe the quarterback who's going to shred the Pac-12 for the next two years, and I think the best quarterback in the Pac-12 right this minute is Jacob Eason, the quarterback at the University of Washington. Now, the third quarterback I can't wait to watch is the quarterback who left Ohio State. Um, when Justin Fields announced he was transferring in, Tate Martell transferred out. He said, I want a chance to play. Uh, I don't want to compete with Justin Fields. I'm out. And um, it, what's funny, too, is he talked a bunch of smack. Je and Tate Martell talked a bunch of smack. Don't come here. I'm the guy. It takes a lot of work. Da -da -da. And the minute he had to actually compete with Justin Fields, Tate Martell left. So uh, now Tate Martell is at Miami. And I have no idea if he's actually any good. And in fact, I think you could compare Kelly Bryant uh, and Tate Martell. They're very similar. They're both average quarterbacks playing on average teams who left really good teams. Um, but the reason why Tate Martell is interesting is because of his ties to his ties to uh, Justin Fields and his ties to Ohio State. I think Miami's not going to play that great. I think Justin, uh, Tate Martell is going to struggle. But if he plays great, ooh, that's an interesting story. And so I just am curious and fascinated. Is Tate Martell any good? I don't know if he is. I don't know if he's not. Um He's just intriguing. It's like a car crash on the freeway. It might not be good at all, but you can't take your eyes off it. And I cannot wait to watch Tate Martell, the new quarterback at Miami. He is also immediately eligible. The fourth quarterback I cannot wait to watch. Um, it's my favorite quarterback of all time in college. It's Jalen Hurts, the quarterback at Oklahoma. Um, I will always, always, always respect Jalen Hurts because of what he did at Alabama. Whether he plays well at Oklahoma or not, his legacy is cemented because of the class he showed when he was benched at Alabama and they put Tua Tungvaloa, a Heisman finalist, as the starting quarterback. Um, his, his amount of class is ridiculous. And uh, two years ago, he was not very good. Right, Two years ago, Jalen Hurts was the crux and the problem for Alabama. 
Uh, in the SEC championship game last year, he got put in the game and and elevated their team and won a lot of games. Won and won and helped them win the game in the SEC championship over Georgia. Um, I think it's possible Jalen Hurts has really improved over the years as a quarterback. Maybe he's a better quarterback now than he was last time we saw him as a starter at Alabama. Um, now he's at Oklahoma. He's got Lincoln Riley, a fantastic, really, really high-level quarterback coach. I think the best quarterback coach in the country is Lincoln Riley, the coach at Oklahoma. And I'm just so curious to see how does coaching elevate and make Jalen Hurts better? It, you know, Oklahoma's won, at the quarterback at Oklahoma has won the last two Heisman trophies. Um, and, and is it possible Jalen Hurts makes a, bunch, makes a bunch of noise and plays really well at Oklahoma? I think it is. And that's what I can't wait to watch is he might not be great. And that's why it's interesting. But man, if he's fantastic and really elevates because of Lincoln Riley, it would be so cool to see that. The number five quarterback I cannot wait to watch in the 2019, uh, in 2019's college football season is the USC quarterback, JT Daniels. Um, so he started as a true freshman last year at USC. He had 2,672 yards, 14 touchdowns. 10 interceptions. He had marginal stats. USC kind of struggled, I think, partially because he is really young and really inexperienced. Here's what's crazy about JT Daniels. He should have been a high school senior last year, but he skipped ahead and went to college early. He finished his senior and junior year in the same, at the same time, finished, junior year, finished his senior year while a junior in high school, went to college early, and became the starting quarterback as a true freshman at USC. That's un- that never happened. That's unbelievable. I think he's a special talent that needs really good coaching. USC was very stagnant last year. They had very marginal, very average, very boring play calling. Their new offensive coordinator is Graham Harrell, the former Texas Tech quarterback, a guy who's got air raid ties. Um, plus, he's got a really good wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown. I can't wait to watch JT Daniels' development. I think he'll be better year one to year two. He's going to have a better coach with better offensive schemes, and he's a year older and wiser. I cannot wait to watch JT Daniels, the quarterback at USC. The, f- the sixth quarterback I can't wait to watch is actually a quarterback out of Colorado, uh, Steven Montez. I think he could be the next big NFL talent. Nobody really, he's under the radar. No one really talks about him, but he's six foot five, has a huge arm, great accuracy, plus he can run the ball really, really well. Um, it's going to be Jacob Eason, Justin Herbert. So probably Justin Herbert's the best quarterback in the Pac 12, then Jacob Eason. And then Steven Montez. They are the top three quarterbacks next year in the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is chock full of really interesting quarterbacks for the first time in a long time. I mean, the Pac-12 has not been a great conference and not been interesting. This is the most interested I've ever been in the Pac-12 in recent years because of Justin uh, Justin Herbert, Jacob Eason, Steven Montez. We got JT Daniels at USC. Um, he's really good. He's a redshirt senior, and he's really fascinating. I think he could emerge as a second or third round quarterback based on his talent, maybe even a first round quarterback. He's got a new coach. He's got average stats last year. Last year, Steven Montez had 2,849 yards, 19 touchdowns, nine interceptions. His coach coach was fired. Um, But physically, the ability Steven Montez has, he might be really, he's really, really physically gifted. Um, And I just can't wait to watch. Does he progress and become an NFL quarterback or not? I don't know. But that's what I want to see from Steven Montez. What kind of quarterback does he progress as and become in the senior year of college. The last quarterback I'm really excited to watch in the 2019 college football season is Adrian Martinez, the quarterback out of Nebraska. Um, He started last year as a true freshman at Nebraska, which is fantastic. Here's why I think he could be a really interesting quarterback next year. One, he's got an NFL arm talent. He's really, really, he can run, but he's got a great arm, a high level, really good NFL arm talent. But the second is that his head coach is Scott Frost. Scott Frost is a former Nebraska quarterback, a former college quarterback himself, and a really, really good head coach. They had a bad year last year. You know, Nebraska went four and eight, uh, but they were starting a true freshman at quarterback. They had a lot of things they were rebuilding. Adrian Martinez had 2,617 yards, 17 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And I just want to see if they can build off last year. I think last year, you know, when you start a true freshman at quarterback, usually you're saying this year is going to suck. We're building on the future. We're investing in our, in our, the next years to come. And I think that's what happened with Adrian Martinez. I think it's very possible he makes a really big jump and becomes one of the more fascinating quarterbacks in the Big Ten next year. I can't wait to watch. Again, the seven quarterbacks I can't wait to watch next year. Quarterback out of Colorado, Steven Montez. Quarterback out of Nebraska, Adrian Martinez. Jalen Hurts, the quarterback at Oklahoma. JT Daniels from USC. 
Tate Martell from Miami, Jacob Eason from University of Washington, and Justin Fields from the Ohio State University. I just want to say thank you so very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports, and it is my favorite thing in the entire world. I love it. Uh, in fact, my dream is to someday do Strong Opinion Sports as my full-time job. If you believe in me, if you believe in that dream, please help me grow by telling your friends about the show. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. Maybe you put a screenshot of it, maybe you put it on Instagram. Uh, it does me a huge help if you can tell your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Another way you can help me if you want, no pressure, I have a PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Zach Schaumler. I also have a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. It does me a huge help if you want to. Um, and uh, really, if you have no money to give, no problem, please. The, the number one thing, if you want to help Strong Opinion Sports, the number one thing you can do is help me grow by telling your friends about this podcast.